I remember Tampa The way she used to be The places we would run to The faces we would see Yes, I remember Tampa With precious memories A city rising on the move A simple yet progressive groove Yes, I remember Tampa She remembers me. Welcome to the Tampa Native Show. Stay tuned now for the fastest 60 minutes in cable broadcast history. Live from the studios at TBCN, the home of the Tampa Native Show. Join your hosts, Mario Nunez, the 15-minute girl, and Steve Canella as they celebrate growing up in Tampa. From Shock Armstrong to Shakey's Pizza, from Braddock Street to Buffalo Avenue, Get ready to call in and tell us your stories, because sharing your memories has never been this much fun. And now, Mario Nunez, the 15-minute girl, and Steve Canella. Hi, Tampa Native Show fans. Mario Nunez here alongside my broadcast partner, Steve Canella. I tell you what, folks. If this is your first night watching the Tampa Native Show, we got but one question for you. Hey, where you been? Man, we've been on the air for almost five years, and we've been chasing our guest in-studio guests tonight for just about as long. And guess what? We caught him. And we got him. He's mm -hmm. sitting right off camera here. We're going to join him in just a couple of minutes. Yep. Harry Smith, the legendary coach, bodybuilder health studio impresario you name it. pioneer in all things about health and and just i can't tell you we've been talking to him for the last 30 minutes and we had to hurry up and get our shirts we, on we to sure come did. in here because the time yeah. ran away from us well you We're picked so, a good night to tune in great let's, night let's to tune way. in thank you for mm -hmm. all of you that are there by your tvs watching you're in for a special treat tonight absolutely let's just say up at the top of the show we know last mm -hmm. night was a tough night for the lightning we know we, we were watching the game last yeah. night. They came out banging the boards, handling the puck. They scored early. It looked good. And somewhere around the third period, man, I think they just ran out of gas yeah, a little right bit. At the end. They went into I that know. prevent defense sort of mm -hmm. a thing where all of a sudden they stopped trying to win the game and, and started to try not to lose it. And before you know it, Chicago scored the tying goal, mm -hmm. and then they scored the go-ahead goal and ended up being the winning goal. Always so, a mistake. All right, okay, all right. It's, it's a long series. It's seven games. We're going to give them the first one. But come on, boys. Keep skating because you, you can't can afford it. to go up to Chicago down 0-2. I'm That's just right. going to say that. Congratulations to the Lady Gators, the Florida Gators, who have back-to-back -back NCAA champions in women's softball. That's a pretty big deal. we good. got a lot of Gator friends around here, mm -hmm. a lot of Gator fans. So congratulations to them. Stevie, tonight's wow. show is going to be a little different. If you already noticed on the set, what's missing? Well, what's missing is the telephone. Uh huh. Because we're not taking calls tonight, and that's part, partly because we have because of our guest. Right. Really, there's so much um, to tell tonight. So many stories that Mr. Smith has. Um, we just wanted to make sure we, you know, utilize a full hour for Harry Smith. But can they contact us, and but how can they do absolutely, so? Absolutely through email. Um, you can email us at goodtimes at tampanativeshow.com. That's goodtimes at tampanativeshow.com. And why good times, Stevie? Well, we have, we have good times here. That's what that's, we have here at the Tampa Native Show. Absolutely. All right. So send us your emails. We will be doing our Bolita drawing as we usually do. We're going to be giving away tonight. And this is special tonight because I don't think that we've given away one of these shirts all season. It's been Stevie. a while. So if you'd like to get in on the Bolita drawing and you would like to win one of these Tampa Native Show shirts, I tell you what, these only go out to very special folks. <laughs> it's our production crew shirt. Mm -hmm. Send us your question, send us your comment, include your bolita number, your lucky number between 1 and 75, closest to without going, without going over. over. That's right. Harry's going to pick that number at the end of the show, and hopefully you will win. Also, let me show you this other shirt that we have here just made up recently. That's a neat this shirt, is, This is kind of a fun shirt, too. This one's available for sale. All proceeds go to helping the Tampa Nata show, of course. And for those of you that are fans of the, uh, the Godfather trilogy mm -hmm. and, of course, the Sopranos, you might notice the font there. What does that say, Stevie? The Tampanos. The Tampanos. You have to have the right accent. We're going to ask Harry Smith if he can pronounce this word correctly. <laughs> he can. And you know what? We've learned something about we Harry sure tonight mm -hmm. that's going to probably knock your socks off. Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't know, I bet you Harry can pronounce the Tampanos pretty good. 
All right, Stevie. Um, next week's guest, real quick, we'll just we'll tease it right yeah. up at the top. Well, we have another musician. We have uh, Charlie Souza. Charlie Souza is going to be joining it's us local, next week local in musician. studio. We can't wait. It's going to be a great show. Absolutely. And we just great. remind you now. We'll remind mm -hmm. you at the end of the show as well. If you'd like to watch last week's show, which was a good one, that sure was. Richard and Mary Ellen Di Pietra. Mm -hmm. That starts immediately after this show tonight. Flip over. We'll tell you the channels as we come to the close of right. this show. Right. And one more real quick pitch on June the twentieth. If you remember. Richard mm -hmm. and his group, his core of excellent, excellent actors, along with Ray Villadonga, who's doing the musical score, the Ebor Stories. I bet you Harry would like to go to that show. He would enjoy that. I'm going to tell him about it. June yeah. 20th, it's a Saturday, 8 o'clock, tickets available. Mm -hmm. The Ebor Stories on Facebook. If you can get to Facebook, you can buy your tickets. I think everybody should go. I think so. Room for 150, and I think they're getting close to being sold out, so don't wait, get your tickets. All right. One more thing, Stevie? Yeah, let's do it. Well, what's this say right here, Stevie? Well, this is really, really interesting. Come on. This is Laurie Park. Not Laurie Park Zoo, but Laurie Park, the old Laurie Park. And you came across, I think, just recently, the, uh, the figurines, like the um, does, Little does Miss that, Muffet. Does everybody right? out there watching remember Laurie Park Fairyland? Fairyland. You know, oh. before we had the mouse in Orlando, all we had really was Laurie Park. And mm -hmm. once a year, we had the Florida State Fair that came over there on, on, uh, that was it. on North Boulevard between Cass and Kennedy. Well... We found through the city of Tampa that the Laurie Park Fairyland figurines still exist. Mm -hmm. About 80% of the original figurines, those fiberglass figurines, Little Miss Muffet who sat on her tuffet, mm -hmm. and of course Cinderella Dumpy and Dumpy. Three Blind Mice, there were the, uh, the three pigs, the three little yeah. pigs, yeah. they're all available to us. While the city, the city has graciously offered us space and time available to work on these. So if you would like to help us in our cause mm -hmm. of refurbishing these wonderful figurines. We need, we need artisans. We need people who can probably paint. We need, if you've had special skills with fiberglass and you know how to work with that, we need you. And if you're just willing to get in there and just with a sponge and some soap and water, clean these, we'd like to hear from you as well. Reach out to us. Stevie, give them that email that, address again. That email address is goodtimes at tampanativeshow.com. You know what? I have another idea for another project after here, this one. Here we go. Let's rebuild Safety Village. Safety Village, y'all. Safety Village in Fairyland mm -hmm. was maximum to us. And of course, the zoo over there with its, you know, the animals mm -hmm. were kind of sad back then. Uh, it really was. But they had some fun, they had some fun rides yeah. for little kids, they, right? No, they did. All right. Let's, let's yeah. bring in our guests. Let's do that. Let's bring in our guests. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, allow me to introduce to you the man who started it all here in Tampa, Florida. You know, mm -hmm. before we knew who Lou Ferrigno was, before we knew who Franco Colombo was, and of course Arnold Schwarzenegger, who set the bar very high, mm -hmm. there was this guy sitting here to my right, Mr. <laughs> Harry Smith. Harry, welcome, Harry. welcome, welcome to, to our show. Glad Thank to be you. here. Oh man, Harry, what a treat to have you in studio with us my tonight. My pleasure being here. Oh, really Harry, is. you know, we were talking before the show started. You got your humble beginnings in Atlanta, Georgia, in the Atlanta, Georgia area. That's, That's where right. you kind of grew up your formative That's years. That's right. But you came to Tampa just about as soon as you could. Your first, your first experience, your first taste of Tampa was in 44, 45, you said? Yes, right. Uh -huh. You were about a 20-year-old guy back then? <laughs> yes. What were you doing here, Harry? What were you doing in Tampa back then? Professional wrestle. You were wrestling. Right. So you were on the circuit before any of us knew what the circuit was. Exactly. Right. And certainly before they had the big car Tuesday nights mm -hmm. at the Armory. Yes, but we were at Tampa U Stadium. Uh, Is that where you wrestled? Uh, the auditorium at Tampa U. Oh, oh okay. Right there. That's where we first started. Okay. That's where we were wrestling, first started. What night of the week was it? Was it? Monday or Tuesday, I Monday or with. Tuesday night? Yeah. Wow. Pretty good crowd? Did you oh, draw yeah. a pretty good That's, crowd? It was full. Oh my goodness. Tampa so, U wasn't hold, wasn't hold that many, but it held quite a bit. Well, and you had the sportatorium as mm -hmm. well. Was that available then or that, that came was, a little bit that later? That was on Saturday. That was Saturday. on Saturday. Oh, okay. That was TV. Mm -hmm. I remember I remember the sportatorium well because the sportatorium set up those Tuesday night cards. Mm -hmm. right. So whatever shenanigans took place at the sportatorium on Saturday mm -hmm. was what made the Tuesday night draw. Because oh, yeah. you can bet your you yes. bottom dollar that yes. if, if Eddie Graham slapped the great Malenko's teeth <laughs> out of his mouth and stomped them on the on the canvas which he did. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That set up the chain match That's between right. them on Tuesday. That's right. I bet you knew both of those fellows. I knew them you? very well. Really? Yes. Harry, you knew everybody, Harry, and everybody knows Just about. you too. I know. You've been in the city That's, a long time. That's right. Now tell everybody because I know they don't know this about you. 
Uh, you do come from a military family, and some people might know that. Yeah. Your pop was a kind of a high-ranking official, was he not? Major, retired major. Mm-hmm. You said, and your brother was in the. Uh... He was a general. Oh yeah, general, two-star yeah. general. Yes, that's yeah. not too high-ranking, is it, Harry? Yeah, that's not. <laughs> it kind of <laughs> is, not, isn't it? Not too well, bad. Yeah, not too bad at all. Well, but your mom, and this is the this is where the story gets most interesting for me, and I think for a lot of our fans as well. Where was your mom from, Harry? My mother was from Cuba. Harry's mom wow. was from Cuba, oh, y'all. From Camagüey. From Camagüey. Which we just found that out tonight. We just found that out about 15 minutes ago, and I'm I'm, I'm just floored about yeah, that. Yeah, that's amazing. About, yeah. I think that's pretty neat, Harry. She was about, she was a military wife. Also, sure. Yes. Uh -huh. Wow, Harry. So, did you have a chance when you were a kid, before things got crazy, to go back to Cuba? I used to wrestle there. You used to wrestle in Cuba. Yeah, on weekends. No, yeah. you wow. did. How'd you get there? Airplane. Flew there. <laughs> <laughs> was Jack Espinosa ever on an airplane with you, Harry? Because Jack used to go back and forth between. No, I, I, I know about but Jack. But you know Jack. I know Jack. Sure, you do. No, he didn't go with me. Okay. Wow. So what was that like? Indoor, outdoor wrestling? Uh, it, was, it, was a out, it was an outdoor place in Havana. In Havana, an outdoor place. Used to wrestle three different places: there, uh, Ocho Rios, Ocho and Rios? Uh, where else? I forget where. Fuegos, Camagüey. Camagüey, no. Maybe Camagüey. No. Yeah. Because I'm just telling you, that must have been something heady for a kid. It was right? outdoors. Yeah, in his early 20s. So yeah. you, did you wrestle in the summertime with all that? No, it, no it, was, it, was summer, it was summer, but it was, it was, it was outdoors. Mm -hmm. Are we talking tag team here? Are we talking singles? Whatever. Whatever was available. Whatever was available, just, available right. Put on a show. Yeah. Oh, that's wow. good stuff. Oh, yeah. That's, that's good stuff. Okay, so let's back the story. We jumped right in the middle of the story. That's amazing to know. We sure did. I just want to know about you. I, want you to, <laughs> I wanted you to look right into that camera and tell everybody that your mom was from Kamakwey, Cuba. That's right. Which is amazing. All right, Harry, so were you born in Atlanta? No, no I was just out of time. I was an Army post called Fort, Fort Oglethorpe. So an Army post north of Atlanta. Hmm. Fort Oglethorpe. And, and you said you have you had a sister who's deceased and now. A, and a brother. And a brother who's still alive, and your brother is older than you. Yeah. As we discussed, that's pretty, some pretty good genes. He's right a two-star general. Two-star general. Because, wow. Harry, hmm. you're about how old now? I'm, I'll be 80 next month. No, no, no. 80 or 90? <laughs> 90. I'm 90 next month. <laughs> 90. You're not teasing nobody, Harry, but you look darn good look, for 90. Thank you, very much. Right now. What got you interested Harry, when you were a kid, is, is the story, is it, is it uh, one of those where you were a sickly little kid, so you used uh, bodybuilding to kind of build your frame and get stronger, or, or how did you gravitate towards bodybuilding and towards uh, exercise? I, uh, I used to wrestle in high school mm -hmm. and uh, learned some wrestling. Then. then I got in the Navy. I joined the military. Sure, World War II. And uh, Naval Air. Mm -hmm. And I started working out on the West Coast. Bodybuilding was get bigger and stronger. Mm -hmm. And then when I got down here, I uh, I uh, wanted to get bigger and stronger, like I said. So I started working out more. Hmm. Okay. And and of course, uh, about this time, there was another fellow that that had a little show on TV uh, that wore a little jumpsuit and had these little ballerina slippers because we didn't know anything about athletic mm -hmm. shoes back then. But he might have been somebody that you might have looked up to in the film. I knew him. You, I bet you did. You know, Come Ed, on. Ed Jarek. And, and I'm, I'm thinking Jack LaLanne as well. Jack LaLanne as well. And I'm, I'm mm -hmm. thinking to myself, mm -hmm. as Harry says, I knew him. Is there anybody that you didn't know, Harry? <laughs> no, I mean, you've lived I know my, pretty much all of them. I bet you did, especially in that business. Yes. Because at the time that you started, Harry, in 1956, when you opened your studio here, mm -hmm. I won't say that that was counterculture. But it was kind of on the fringe, you know. It hadn't really, oh, yeah, it was you know, to, yeah. It was the big. It was big in California. Yes, and New York. You would expect, right? The two big yeah. cities, the two yeah. big markets in our country, right, right. and California, which has that wonderful mm -hmm. weather. That's people right. outside Venice Beach. People think about Venice Beach, yeah. Muscle Beach. Back in that's where I started. Muscle Beach. Yes, right. All right, well, look, really. Wow. Uh, and if, for incredible. those of you, because see, for those of you just kind of getting to know Harry mm -hmm. tonight, which is amazing because Harry's been here as long as he has been. Uh, we're going to show you a bunch of good pictures here in just a second, but there's one picture in particular. We got a show right up at the top, Harry in Havana, right? Harry mm -hmm. in Havana, when Harry met Havana. Uh, mm -hmm. Becky, if you've got that call for it, because we just want to let you know that Harry was quite serious about his bodybuilding endeavors as a very young man. Uh, call for that picture, Steve. I think that's picture mind. number two, it looks like. Picture number, picture two, number two, Becky. Two. Uh, let's go ahead and show that. That's what Harry kind of looked like when he was a young fella and he was wrestling. And. Uh, Harry, what, what, what were you weighing about there? I weigh 220. 220, 220. and about 5'7", Harry, right? Wow. Five, eight, a little over. A little over? Yes. We all shrink a little that's bit. That's the Queen Mary in the background. In all muscle. And what is that in the background? That's the Queen the Mary. Oh, that's Mary. the Queen Mary, that. and that's in Havana. That's right. What a that's, great picture. Yeah. That's amazing. So look at that. You've got Havana in that picture. You've got a 
built out Harry Smith in that picture and the Queen Mary in the background. Pretty good picture, Harry. Yeah. Thank so, you. so when you wrestled, you wrestled. Uh, I was wrestling there then. Yeah, of course you were, and you were wrestling guys. What, maybe six foot, six two, oh, bigger boys? Much bigger. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. You win your fair share. Well, I was, I was, I could hold my own. Yeah, I bet you could. Uh, yeah, because I. Shooter, was a shooter. Harry was a shooter. Nobody, nobody messed with you when you're walking on the beach. No, I'm sure, right? No. <laughs> That's no. pretty good stuff. How yeah. long did it take you to get that body built out like that, Harry? That's a few years worth quite, of work, right there. Quite a, quite a few years. Yeah. And nutrition was a big part of it as oh, well. Oh, by all means, every yeah. day, had to every be, day I had to have something like that. That's mm -hmm. right. That's right. You got your protein going. You got, yeah. Steve, you want to call for the pictures? And yeah, we, we just do. go through the pictures. Yeah, absolutely. Let's. Uh, in fact, let's start from the beginning. Let's start with number one. Picture number one, and Harry. As is, the pictures yeah, come up, share with everybody fantastic. what we're seeing. That's my building that I built. Look at the old cars And when out you there. say you built it, does that mean, Harry, that you literally laid those bricks? Uh, no, uh, no. You had somebody do. I had to. Okay, you contracted to have that done. Yeah. How many of us drove by that building so often, those of us that lived in and around South Still Tampa? Do. Oh, Still of do. course, of course. But look at those cars, too. Huh? That gives you an indication what year that might have been right there, those cars. That's yeah. probably early 60s. Would you say, Harry, late 50s? Those cars right there, that late cars, 50s? That's, right. Yeah, that's got to be 60s. Probably. You know, ba you know, based on this picture and the history of, of um, the health studio, we have an email here from John Oliva. Okay, John let's, Oliva. Let's read that real quick because it kind of ties in with, with the, the building here. Wonderful. Um, John Oliva writes, um, what was the, the deciding factor to come into Tampa and open up your own gym? Great I, question. I, Thank I you, John. To, I used to wrestle here during the mm -hmm. week, and I came down here from Atlanta to wrestle. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kind of fell in love with the area? Uh, kind of. I got to like it a lot from Atlanta. Sure, sure. And then I opened up the gym. Sure. In 1945, 46. You like the Cuban coffee and the Cuban toast? Right? <laughs> yes. That, well, he was familiar yeah, with that, right? That's right. Mama. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mama's side of the family. And I moved my mother and dad down here from Atlanta later mm -hmm. on in years, and I put them up here. Sure. Oh, wow. And got familiar with mm -hmm. the Columbia restaurant real quick. Oh, and all, 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 Beach and uh, all that bunch. When Tampa was just so small and everybody right. kind of knew everybody. I, I, I enjoy Tampa. Sure. I really do. Sure. Oh, yeah. And it's home now. That's mm -hmm. right. You know? <laughs> all right, so that's great. Thank you, John, for that question. Thank you, John. Wonderful. Let us remind everybody, Stevie, be checking on those emails. Oh, yeah, Make definitely. sure we don't miss any emails. Did John give a, uh, send a bolita number? No, he didn't. Okay, well, maybe no. if John's out there watching, he can read, he can send a bolita number, or we'll just assign him one. Because everybody needs a shot tonight. They, they, they sure do. All right, Becky, let's go to picture number three, I guess, because we showed picture number two right quick. That's the inside of the gym right That's there. That's the inside, yes. Then a lot of fellas would remember what that looks like. Huh? You know, I Is remember the building still there? Still the building still there. And is it still a gym? It's still a gym. No, it's not open. It's not open. No. Harry, do we need to put together a core group of fellas and go in there and reopen the gym? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay, I'm just checking. I'm just checking. We need to keep that open for posterity's sake. It's you know, I, work, I worked out there in 78, and that's the way I remember it, just like that. Yeah. And that's a recent, looks like a fairly recent picture. I had two sides, a lady's side and a men's side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Great memory. And did you know, because we talked about it a little bit at the top of the show well, before we got on the air, you knew Hector and Eloisa, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because that was a kind of a, they weren't a, really a competitor gym, but they, they were, were, they were brother and sister gym. They were a woman's place. Right. Period. And they were over on Cypress uh, Street there in West Tampa. Uh, on Tampa. Swan. Mm -hmm. Swan and Del Mabry. Oh, originally. That, were they were there originally? I believe so, right? Okay. Uh, Swan and Del Mabry. And who else, we talked about it, who else were some of your contemporaries back in those days who else had gyms? Oh, uh, Hector was on the north side of town. Okay. Hector and, uh, and then... Uh, What's his name? Did we talk about Ed Maley as well? Ed Maley was a judo place. Right, mm -hmm. the, uh, down the on McDill. Oh, McDill. McDill. Who predated you? you? You told me the gentleman's name was another Harry. Harry Jones? Harry, was Harry, Harry Jones. Harry Jones. And he was on McDill also. He was on, he was on McDill Avenue. Okay. So, so and I was just going north of that. North of that. And you guys knew of each other, oh, obviously. Yeah. Well, we were friendly. What was the membership like back then, Harry? How'd you handle your membership back in the early days? 30 a month. $30 a month. Yeah. Dollar a day. Yeah. Oh, oh man, a dollar a day. And, and very well worth it, too. Of course. Yeah. Of yeah. course. Well, that's good to know. Keep those questions coming in, y'all. Good times at TampaNativeShow.com. Be sure to include your Bolita number because we're going to want to give away that shirt before the night's over. All right, Becky, mm -hmm. let's go to the next photograph. Hey, can you name some of these folks here? You know most of these people. Where are you in that picture, Harry? I see you there in there somewhere. I don't know. I can't see. You I can't either. I see him in the blue he? shirt. Right in the middle. Yeah. No, that's, that's. Oh, there he is in the blue shirt. That's right. Light blue shirt. No, that's. Was that like sort of the last day, Harry? What no, was that's a, that was a, a birthday party. Uh -huh, okay. okay. One of many, because you've had a few. <laughs> Harry, look at you there. Yeah. And we can tell by the hands on the clock. Apparently, it's uh, about quarter after three. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. What machine is that, Harry? I can't see. I think that's the Smith machine, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. <laughs> I think it is. 
You know the Smith machine. I think it was for doing pull ups, right? Well, no, like I think it's the, uh, the bench. Oh, that could the be. Smith bench. That yeah. could be. You had that machine in there. I'm sure you did. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look at that logo. Did you design that, Harry? Yes, I did. That's, That's nice. nice. I like that. 3415 Horatio. That's mm -hmm. right. Went there many times. Make it that phone number. 8720503. That's my mother and dad. Nice people. That's mom and dad? Yeah. My dad's military. And, yes. And my mother's Cuban. That's Roger Maris on the right hand side. It is Roger Maris, 61 and 61. Wow. Right. You knew him too, Harry. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You knew everybody, Harry. So if you knew Roger Maris, did you know the other fellow he hung out with? Mickey Mantle? Oh, yeah, no, I used to play golf with Ricky. No, you didn't. Yeah. Here? Yeah. Oh, wow. Where did he, he promise he, you a uh, golf club? No, he was a coach at uh, Rocky Point. Oh, no way. He yeah. was a batting coach for the Yankees. Oh, no at way. At that time. At that time, sure. Yeah. So maybe late 60s after he retired, early 70s. Yeah, after. Because I think his last year was 67, so it would have been yeah, maybe a little bit after that. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, Harry. Who are these nice folks here? That's Frank Zane and his wife. From Frank Zane. He's from St. Pete. Yep. Remember Frank him? Zane, of course, Mr. Universe. Mr. Universe. Sure. Uh, yeah. And he had, he had some gyms as well, did he not? No, he didn't open He never opened a gym. No. Frank Calta. He was a, no, Frank Calta had one. I'm thinking of Frank Calta. Yeah, that's right. He had one in uh, San Diego. He had a personal trainer, but uh, he didn't have any. Problems. That's what I remember about Frank Zane, Harry, that he was local. He was in the Bay Area. Yeah, he he trained with me. He trained with and me. And he trained with you as well? For three years, four years he was there. Wow, Harry. And, and yeah. how did you meet all these people? Was it just going through the, the, the competitions together and the wrestling together? Over I mean, a period of time. Just did they time. come to your Word gym? Mouth, yeah. And go check out Harry Smith. Yeah. Of course, mm -hmm. Harry, you were it, man, for a lot of years. Yeah, you were I, it. I enjoyed that. Sure. I enjoyed that. I the, mean, before mm -hmm. European Hell Spa and Vic Tanny mm -hmm. and all American Fitness. I, I started with Vic Tanny in California. No, you didn't. Oh, really? Where did that name come from? I just pulled it out of the hat, didn't yeah. I? No, he was out in Santa sure, Monica. Wow. You know, he got big in Florida, too, in South Florida. He had some salons right. out there in South Florida. But, big but, but I, I, I trained with Vic. Got my first start with him. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Was it about your age as well, Harry? Were you guys the same age, more or less? Or was no, he was, old, he was older than I was. Oh, he was? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. So um, you learned kind of from him then? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I learned from Big Tanny. Oh, man, now it's getting good. Now we're, getting, now we're going down the road a little bit. This Who doesn't he know? In I mean, fact, he died here in Tampa. Did he? Wow. Wow. One day the sports editor called mm -hmm. me, said, Harry, do you know I remember Rick Tanny? I said, Just so does. Mm -hmm. He said, Well, he, can you come 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 take care of his body? He's, they got his body here. I don't, don't know what to do with it. Wow. Oh, wow. wow. He didn't have any family uh, left. No, oh, his, no. his, his wife was divorced from him, but he they, they packed him back to California. Okay. Oh. Yeah. That on a weekend. Oh, I'll be wow. darned. Yeah. And Vic and I were very close. Of course, I would expect. He offered me his first managership. Uh, in Long Beach, California, but I had a chance to go to Georgia to play football, so I turned it down. No, and he had a very successful run. Oh, I mean, all, over, all over the world. Yeah. All yeah. over the world. Vic Tanny Health Salons. I remember that like it was yesterday, oh. man. Oh, that's great. Now we're getting now we're getting somewhere, ladies and gentlemen. Good times yeah. at Tampa Native Show. Hard to send us your emails. Anybody coming? Anybody uh, send one in? Not Steve? yet. We have oh, a, right. um, some information from uh, Diane about the Faraday figures, but we'll get to that one very good. later. Yeah. And let me see, there's another question there. Yeah, we do have, an, we do have one, uh, another email. Okay, just um, came in right now. Yep, yep. This is uh, Bobby McMullen. Bobby McMullen. Um, Bobby writes, uh, he has a 62-inch waist and wants to know what he can do for his abs. Can I take this one, Harry? Do what now? He says, Bobby McMullen mm -hmm. says he's got uh, a 62-inch waist. waist and he wants to know what he can do for his abs. Quit eating. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there I you go. I was going to suggest, Bobby, just go ahead and keep your shirt on. But, uh, you know, either one of those two will probably or, or work. Or both. Maybe. Yeah, that's great. Sit-ups and leg raises, he's got a special eye. <laughs> sit-ups and leg raises, and then sit down. Do you remember Do you remember squat thrusts? Oh, yeah. Do you mm -hmm. remember squat thrusts? Oh, yeah. We learned that in elementary school. I did it in high school. As part of the mm -hmm. physical fitness, mm -hmm. as part of the Those President's Physical Fitness Award. And I don't know, Harry, if you remember that, but you may. It was during, I, I want to say, the Nixon administration. It was the early 70s, uh, maybe right at 1970. Uh, elementary school, sixth grade, boys and girls, you had to do so many mm -hmm. push-ups, so many sit-ups, so many pull-ups, run a 50-yard mm -hmm. dash, do these things and do it all in a timed fashion. Right. And if you successfully accomplished the, the goals, the tasks, you got a little patch that, and a certificate saying mm -hmm. you successfully accomplished, you are a member of the President's, it's the President's <laughs> Physical Fitness Award, President of the United States. And man, it was kind of hard to do because mm -hmm. you had to do a lot of sit-ups yeah. and a lot of chin-ups and pull-ups. And yep. Anyway, Harry, you were doing that when... We didn't even know what that was. That's right. Back you were, in the you were early forties. Early forties. My goodness. All right, let's go to the That's next amazing. picture. Thank you for that question, Bobby. No, no. Good uh, question. No bullied a number for Bobby either. 
No, no. Okay. Bobby, send us an email at goodtimesattampanatorshow.com. Now, this, this gentleman here with all that fruit salad on his jacket That's there. my brother. Oh, uh, is it? Okay. What's his name? Jim Smith. Jim Smith. Boy, you guys had names like Jim Smith, Smith Harry Smith, <laughs> Dan he's, Smith. He's, he's a commanding general in Seoul for three years. Was wow. he? Wow. Yeah. Two-star general. That's pretty neat. Where's he living now? He's in, he's in ten, uh, Tennessee, Georgia. In Georgia. Uh, mm -hmm. but in, a, in a hospital. Oh, uh, is he? Okay. Yeah. Well, it gets to a point, you know, it gets to a certain point. All right, these fellows here. All right, that's... The gentleman on the left, I recognize. I think that's Al Lopez. Al Lopez, then my dad, and Tony Cuccinella, then myself. Tony um, Cuccinella? And, and with a brown shirt yeah, on. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Of course. I had all those guys in, in high school. He but, knew everybody. Oh, wow. That that's is me good. on the end. Yeah, you look good, man. You still look like you bench about 300 pounds right there. <laughs> How much you bench? 435. Wow. Really? My, my best, yes. Wow. Oh, that's pretty good, Eric. <laughs> that's about twice my Man, best. Man, that's, that's pretty good. That's this, John Olivo. John Olivo John right there. He that's sent us a question that's earlier. Florida. Yes, sir. He was a tough, tough. He, he looks tough. Mickey Mantle. Yeah. Mickey Mantle. Now, go back to John Olivo for just a second. You don't want to get in his way. Look at that. Because I want to I ask. That's John Olivo. John, John played uh, offensive line there? Yeah, player. he was a guard. Offensive guard. Okay, look at that. At Florida. Sure, number 60. He went with the Jesuit. Uh huh. Jesuit and then on to Florida. Yeah. A lot of a lot of guys followed that path. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And a lot of guys, of course, playing in Robinson and then Florida. Oh yeah. But Tampa's had. He a went long, to Jesuit. Jesuit. The Tampa's had a long-standing oh, yeah. tradition, even more so than Florida mm -hmm. State. Florida State's come on in the last. Yeah, years, John Reeves and was there. A bunch of guys from Florida. Sure, a bunch of guys and, went to Florida. And that's the uh, cigar factory, right? Right, the Oliva, the Oliva cigar, cigar factory. factory. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. that's John Oliva from the Oliva Cigar Factory. That's right, Oliva right. Tobacco Company. So, yep. mm -hmm. And how? And his how? dad gave him that business. Wow. And inherited the business. Wonderful. That's great. Wonderful. He still great. runs it. More tradition here in Tampa. Yeah. More tradition. That's a lot right. of history. How how big would you have said he was there in that? Two forty. Wow. wow. Man, that's pretty good. And back then they took those pictures. Man, they made, they made mm -hmm. them look yeah. menacing. Mm -hmm. They made the guys look menacing. Offensive guard, He's you had a great to athlete. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I imagine so. These guys did it all. They played baseball, they played basketball. Mm -hmm. They just happened. And some of them were good swimmers, too. We talked about that earlier. Was Joey Papella. Joe Papella mm -hmm. good was swimmer. an all American swimmer at, at Jesuit. And you know what? You stop and think about it. You know, Florida. He was, uh, I mean, covered, you know, surrounded by water. Mm -hmm. It's natural. Everybody had swimming pools back then. And I thought you went to the public pool. That's right. <laughs> Well, that's pretty good stuff. We just saw Joe not too long ago, didn't we? We had lunch I, with Joe. I see him every week. Do you see him every week? <laughs> well, you just walk over there. You just walk around the corner from him. That's pretty good. I'm only two blocks away. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you don't you don't stray too far from home. I mean, South Tampa's a nice no, place to be. Everything's I, I love where I will. Do you still go by uh, Rights Gourmet Shop sometime? Oh, yeah, 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 I know yeah, I know that. Sure. What else? What What were some of your places? Your favorite places to go, Harry? We talked about Malio's. You, oh, were, you were a fixture of Malio's, I'm oh, sure. Oh, I know Malio's for way back. Hmm. We talked about you knew Rick Caceres. Rick oh, Caceres was Rick, a good yeah. friend. I knew Rick for a long time. Did he we, ever train with you? Huh? Just curious. Did he ever? No, train? he never works out. He was, he was a, a big man. He was How did a big he not guy. work out like that? But he was a natural big guy. Yeah. He and Joe Papello. And strong. Were big and strong. Yeah. Without having to lift too much in the way of right. weights. Right. Right. Because there was a time, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. there was a time when. They, the misconception was, Harry, that working out was going to make you all muscle-bound. No, and right, no. You know what I mean? You know, if train correctly, you just get bigger and stronger. And flexible, too, because you, right. you maintain your flexibility. Yes, you right. always work towards that. That's right. It's not just lifting to get strong. you got to maintain the flexibility. That's right. Harry, when I was 18, I started working out at your gym for the first time and never, never uh, lifted weights at all before. So um, one day I was in there by myself. And I know you had a lot of the wrestlers in there. And it was really intimidating because, you know, here I am, a, like a 97-pound weakling, and all these huge guys, and they're pumping iron and, lift, you know, bench pressing 300, 400 pounds. I had, like, a 135-pound uh, uh, barbell, and I got trapped on it. I couldn't lift it anymore. And it stuck down on my chest. And of all, of all people, uh, Mr. Saito, the wrestler, comes Mr. over. Mr. Saito. Yeah. He comes by. He didn't say a word. Lit, one hand lifts uh, the barbell off, puts it back on the rack. And walked away totally disgusted. Never said, and I said, thank you. That he happens never, a lot. He, he never turned around. Bacon. <laughs> he saved your bacon. Steve. That's a bell ring right there, that my brother. Silly. I never forgot that. It was amazing. Well, you know, when you're first starting out, you're just in there trying to get, you know, if you don't have anybody teaching you, showing mm -hmm. you, you know, you're, you know more or less, you know safety, you know. I was lucky that I had some instruction from the beginning mm -hmm. when I was in California. Okay, so mm -hmm. you learned early on so right. that you could teach. Right. Mm -hmm. And who taught you early on? The, the, the trainer at Vic Tannies. At Vic Tannies, okay. Yeah. Because California has always been on the cutting edge of bodybuilding. That and, and, and fitness. And New York. And New York. Yeah. And New York. Hmm. 
biggest names that you ever came across that came into your studio? Would it be in the Frank Colombo, Frank Zane, the biggest names? Schwarzenegger. You, you had Arnold was, come in there? Yeah, he, came, he was down here for, for a movie. Was, was he filming something? What was he doing? No, he was down here. He gave an exhibition at, at uh, the high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, wow. he, he came by. How big was that man? Big man. Yeah, 6'2". He's yeah. tall, too. Isn't the Austrian he? oak, brother. Yeah. The Austrian oak. Yeah. What a chest he had, huh? Yeah. And those arms were ridiculous. That's How right. about the wrestlers? Uh, all the, the, all the, the wrestlers. The Hulkster and, and... All that crowd. And, and, and did, did Mike work out with you? Mike Grand, did oh, he yeah, work sure, out with you? Crowd. And Eddie's father. And, and Eddie? And yeah. Eddie? Eddie, oh, yeah. Yeah. Had I almost all the wrestlers, for that matter. At came. some point in time, you must when have. They, when they ever had time off... They would grab, they sure. work out. And and what the we green, know green about the, Lincoln, right? of course, yeah. what we know about the what we know about the wrestlers is that they were hitting the mat quite often. That they oh, yeah. they were wrestling sometimes four or five nights a week. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, Tampa. When they work out when they could. And they worked out mm -hmm. when they could because they had to That's to right. keep their fitness level up. Mm -hmm. Right. So it wasn't a question of on your off day you're lounging by the pool. No. You're in the gym. In the oh, yeah. gym. Yeah, you're That's staying right. fit. You're staying healthy. It's incredible. All right, that's that's. Uh, listen, I'm fascinated by your story, Harry. I'm just, uh, you know, you you didn't live to be this long and know and meet all these wonderful people mm -hmm. by not having these experiences. Let me ask this: um, You've traveled a bit, Harry. Have you done some traveling? Yes, I did. I went to New Zealand and Australia, mm -hmm. Hawaii, of course, mm -hmm. on the way back and forth. Sure. Uh, all the Bahamas, all that. All over the state. I didn't go to Europe or hardly at all. Not too much of Europe. Not no. too much of Europe. I went to I went the other way. Sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure. Well, you stayed in warm climates. That's you stayed where you stayed where people didn't wear much clothing. Uh, is it? Cuba, of course. Yeah. Uh, Russia there and the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, and the reason I asked that question is, did you find people in one part of the world that you frequented more hospitable than others? What was some of your favorite places to go? I liked them all. Did you? Hmm. Just loved life and loved oh, traveling. Yeah. And like it, yeah. Now, have you been back to Cuba since things have changed a little bit? Are you aspiring to go? No, I haven't been there since I since I wrestled. Oh wow! Wow! I haven't been there since. Would you go, Harry? If you oh, got the sure. opportunity, because I mean, yeah. I wrestle. Yeah. Yes. I go, go back. Uh, not not to go back to wrestle, <laughs> Harry, because I don't think anybody <laughs> wants to see you wrestling now. Yeah, but well, just to go my back. mother, my mother's from there. So That's I what I'm go. saying. Sure, yeah. of course, and maybe go back to Camagüey and see, yeah. you know, oh yeah, see the town. Yeah. I mean, it, you can do it now, Harry, because oh, I, yeah. I bet you, if you asked John Nice, he'd probably put a little trip together. You guys would go over <laughs> yeah. there. Not that far. It's only an hour by air. That's right. Maybe we'll so, go with him. Nice and close. Yeah. yeah, Becky, if we have some pictures to go, sure, we don't want to miss any of the pictures. Let's get to those pictures. Absolutely. Ah, oh, the Mick. Mickey Mantle. The Mick. Yep. Favorite Mickey story? You got a favorite Mickey story? I do, but it's not. Okay, it's not. It's, yes, it's, 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 it's not G-rated. We can't share it with you. That'll be for He's the. He's a H crazy guy. Yeah, right? that'll be for the HBO no. show. This is, well, I tell you what. Um, Did he, he work was on a your gym? Guy. Uh, Did he work out in your gym at all? No, no. no he just we, we, we golf. played golf together. Oh, just golf. golf. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When he was a batting coach for the Yankees. Oh, okay. Wow. And another guy that necessarily didn't work out with weights, but was naturally bones. One of those country mm -hmm. boys that was just real strong. You know, Oklahoma guy. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, both sides of the plate, hit them far, mm -hmm. fast. But I don't know that I remember anybody ever saying that Mickey spent a lot of time in the gym. No, he didn't. You know, he did a lot of 12-ounce curls, if you know <laughs> what I'm saying, Harry. You know yes, what I'm saying? A lot of 12-ounce curls. But not, at that time, it was still not quite there. If mm -hmm. you were wrestling, if you were a professional yeah, wrestler. My mom was forced to. A forced mm -hmm. to. And if you were a football player, you probably needed to as well. Yeah, but baseball, not so much. And certainly not basketball. That's right. not, not at that time. That's right. Now they do. I mean, oh, you yeah. look at a guy like Jose Canseco. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. To maintain uh, yourself uh, injury free. Because, right. you know, the, the, the body that's strong like that will resist and, uh, those big injuries, those catastrophic that's injuries. That's true. Yeah. Next picture, Becky. These are, these are great. I, I think this. I know that guy, too. We've already seen him once tonight. Who is that? Tell everybody. Al Lopez. That's Al. That's, yeah. that's, that's Al Lopez. That's Al Lopez. Yeah, yeah. Look, look at that. I used to have Al when he was down in Palmasia. Mm -hmm. Nice guy. Super guy. Did you go have coffee with him every huh? once in a while? Did you go have coffee with him and breakfast? Or? Yeah, because he would, play, he would play cards a lot. Oh, did he? Okay. Sure. Yeah. okay. And sure. play golf. Wrong. Now, did he play dominoes? I'm just curious. No, you know, no, I, I never saw him play dominoes. Not dominoes, but cards he did. Okay. Yeah. Well, because cards is what they played in the big leagues, you know, yeah. Yeah. in the clubhouse, before, mm -hmm. after, on the trains yeah. and on the planes. Cards was always big. Hmm. Yeah, we, we, um, 
We lost a big part of our history when we lost Al Lopez. Yeah, but well, we sure did. So grateful to have had him here, and, and of course his base, the baseball stadium that was right there on mm -hmm. on Tampa Bay. And, That's right. And Dale Mabry for all those years That's named right. named the Al Lopez Field. It's a great, uh, great Al Lopez Park now. It was, and I'm mm -hmm. sorry to see it go. You I know, missed that. They put Raymond James mm -hmm. right in the same footprint, and, and then they tore down Tampa. Tampa Stadium, you remember Tampa That's Stadium, right. Harry? That's right. Where all those University of Tampa football That's games right. were played. That's mm -hmm. right. Did you have any season tickets, any of those, Tampa Stadium? No, but I went to Tampa U. I bet you mm -hmm. did. And I, I know a lot of ball players. They train with me too, also. Sure. Mm -hmm. Did you ever get to see fabulous Freddie Solomon? Did Freddie oh, Solomon? I knew, I knew Freddie. Of course you did. <laughs> Freddie, you knew everybody, Harry. <laughs> it's a redundant question already. Super guy. <laughs> I had to go good. see Freddie at the stadium. One. Good man. Just, that boy mm -hmm. passed away. Wow. Yeah, good man. Oh, that, yeah. And boy, could he run. Boy, was he, boy, he exciting he, to watch play, huh? Oh, he could something else. Fabulous well, Freddie Solomon. Else. And then he had a nice run in the, in the NFL as well, yeah. you know, with the Dolphins and the 49ers. Right. Yeah, that's right. We wow. had a picture there we were just going to show for just a second. Another one of your disciples, another one of the boys that trained with you. John Reeves. John, John Reeves. Yeah, he was all SEC when he was in Florida. All SEC? Yep. He used to throw... I had some records. used to throw some long passes to a fellow named Carlito Alvarez. Remember yes, Carlos right. Alvarez? Oh, sure. And I tell you what, John was... I see uh, John once in a while now. Yeah, sure, yeah. he's still around town. Yeah. He set some records at Robinson, too. Yeah. Had I had him in high school, of course. <clears throat> mm -hmm. He was big at that time, I mean, yeah, size-wise. Right, you know, 6'3", right, right. could throw the ball. Good size. A good distance, yeah. Now it seems like everybody said, now it seems like the punters are 6'3", that's crying right. out loud, you <laughs> know? Right. But back then, a quarterback that stood that tall could see over everybody. And that's right. Mm -hmm. he had John, a real, was, John was a good athlete. Yes, he was. Played baseball and basketball, as I recall. That's wonderful. Well, I'm glad you still see him there. And, and wow. now, what Tampa native worth his soul know. doesn't know this person. that face? Yeah. And that voice. He brought us so much joy, mm -hmm. Gordon oh, Soli. Yeah. Gordon Soli. Gordon Soli. And you knew him for a few years, didn't you? Huh? You knew him for a few years. Oh, yeah. The whole time he was wrestling. Of I course. mean, you know, the announcement. Yeah. announcing. Wow. Now, did you, here's a good question. Did you get a chance to... Uh, to go backstage, or I should say to go into the dressing room, did you have, because you were Harry Smith and a former professional wrestler yourself, did you have carte blanche to be able to go in there and, you know, Tuesday nights go backstage before the show and see the fellas and talk mm, to them? No, after I quit wrestling, no. Okay, so it's kind of a close fraternity. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. once, you, once you're out of the game, you're, you're but, out. But you could be in the front row and they'd know, I mean, oh, yeah. Harry's here, let's, you know. Yeah, you could do that. Show him the front but, row. Uh, mm -hmm. But I was, uh, I was, by myself in that sense, and mm -hmm. a, a fan, you might say. Sure. I used to go to the ball, go down there and just, just watch them. Watch just watch them wrestling? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, how did the game change, the wrestling game change from the time that you started in the 40s to when you saw the great stuff happening here in Tampa in not the 60s lot. and 70s? Not a lot. So basically the same? Not, not a lot. It didn't get crazy until the McMahons took over and then the fire started shooting out of the turnbuckles. Out of New York. And people started jumping off of ladders. That's right. Okay. Right. Because before then it was the black tights, the taped wrists, and you went man to man, one on one. That's, that's that was right. It. And a submission yep. hold could have been a bear hug. That's right. Because Sailor Art Thomas, when he put you in a bear hug, that was about I knew, all there I was. I knew Sailor. Ah, man, come on. I <laughs> see. I just keep throwing out names. Wait a minute. I'm going to throw out a nice let's, let let's play Stump Harry. He, he used to play to work out in my place. Wasn't he? He was a huge man. Oh, yeah. He was a All just, arms. Well, you know, and his chest was, yeah, yeah he was right. gigantic. Uh -oh. And I, I remember him distinctly because mm -hmm. he, he went by the name in the, in the late 50s. He was Seaman Art Thomas. And then it was mm -hmm. funny because, he, mm -hmm. you know, I guess that didn't play too well. And they changed it to Sailor. Thomas. I guess you can understand why. He used to play in a hotel, <laughs> Bayview Hotel downtown. Mm -hmm. That's where you just say. But back then, that was arguably the probably the golden years of wrestling, wouldn't you say, Harry? The from say '55 to '75. Mm -hmm. Would you say those were maybe the best years of professional I wrestling? I think so. Probably so. There was mm -hmm. a lot, of, a lot of involvement. I mean, you got you know by that time you already had. You had Lou Thez, you had Gagne up north doing his yeah, stuff. I know Vern. Oh, oh my God, he knew Vern Gagne. I knew Lou Thez. Of course you did. <laughs> That's why I'm bringing these names up, because I know you knew them. You had to have known the, the world champion world for champion. 13 years. No. He was a heavyweight champion of the world. Wow. For 13 years. Lou was. Try that on for size. Oh. Try that on for size. I Killer know. Kowalski. Did you know Killer oh, Kowalski? Oh, yeah. yeah you I, knew I, Killer. I know him, but I didn't know yeah, him personally. Personally. But Lou was left-handed. Was he? Yeah. So that strong left hand. Uh, yeah. 
So Vern, Vern was wow. also a, a champion, also. Yeah. And and but he was in the northern circuit, Minnesota Most area. Time, right. So we didn't hear too much about him. Right. Lou made it to the south, so we got oh, to hear yeah. a little bit Lou, about Lou him. Lou was a thirteen-year champion. That's amazing. You know, we need to have Harry write down all the people he knows. Yes. On, on a big list. That better be a long piece of paper. I know. <laughs> that better, better be a, and sharpen that pencil, mm -hmm. by the way, because mm -hmm. that's going to be an incredible list. One. Becky, do we have any photos left? We do. Please, let's show them. Are you having a good time so no, far, yeah, Harry? Sure. And listen, don't let me forget anything. If there's something that pops into your okay. head, we want to hear it. I know that guy. That's Franco, Franco Colombo. Yeah. Colombo, Franco. yes. He and his wife were down here for three days one time. Three days with me down here. Was he a tall, tall guy? Huh? Negative. No, he was negative. He, he wasn't tall. He was like us, Harry. No, he was, he was very short. Yeah, he was 5'5", five, 5'6". Five, five, and and that's, a, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. You know, I think what made Arnold Schwarzenegger so unique was that he was six foot two, or and, bigger, and or bigger, mm -hmm. or bigger. So, and hence the, uh, the the nickname they gave him, the Austrian Oak, big, big man. Yeah. But there's something to be said because bodybuilders, by and large, even to this day, that the most exceptional ones are probably five eight, five nine. They're not necessarily tall. That's right. They're just incredibly dense. That's right. Dense muscles. Like this. Like this. Exactly like this. Yeah. And you, you, Harry. Because, I mean, you know, at 5'8", 220, yeah. that's pretty thick. Yeah. So, but it's, and there's also something to be said for it. And if I'm wrong here, Harry, you correct me. Um, Middle Eastern genetics and, and, it, and it, I want to say Italian and, and Spanish, the ge there's something in the genetic makeup of those men that give them that, that extra little bit right. of, Right. Density. You understand what I'm saying? Because yeah. the world champions that we all come to know as world champions, they're all usually, you know, they're not from Pennsylvania. They're, and if they are, they're of whatever extraction. You know, you, right. the Middle, Middle Eastern mm -hmm. more so than Eastern European. You had Eastern European, uh, you know, Romanian, Czechoslovakian, you had those guys. But the guys that made it to the top, mm -hmm. for some reason, they came out of the upper rim of Africa. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes the Mediterranean, all Greek. Yeah. The Greek bodybuilders were amazing. Greek, the Italian, Italian bodybuilders Italian, were amazing. Right. Am I am I about right yeah, on that, Harry? Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. yes. mm -hmm. And you had a little Cuban in you, so that, that counts for that something, helps. right, Harry? Oh, yeah. That counts for that counts for <laughs> something. I Definitely. like that. Yeah, Becky. Hey, we got an email too. All right, read that email. Let's Bye. do this. And by, by the way, this is from uh, Casey Powell. We haven't heard from him hey, in a while. Case. Hey, Casey. There's Casey. Well, he writes, uh, started going to Harry's around the age of 14. Mm -hmm. He was always so very helpful and always had time to teach us kids the proper way to work out and continued watching to make sure we did everything properly. Harry would introduce us to the wrestlers who worked out there, which as a kid was a huge thrill. Of course. Uh, thank you, Harry, for all the help in the past. You are you're truly Casey are a Powell. living legend and a great man. I don't know him. Casey Sheriff's Powell. Sheriff's police officer. Sheriff's deputy. Yep. Huh? Sheriff's deputy, yeah. exactly right. Belita number 15. 15 for Casey, put that down. Okay. Case, Skipper, he remembers, he says, I remember Casey Powell, he was a police officer, <laughs> he was in law enforcement, that's right. See? And now he uh, is the proprietor and owner of the Tiny Tap, which is on Morrison. That's right, he is, you're right. Yeah. Morrison, tap, tap, right. right there just off of um, uh, right. off, uh, Howard. Howard. Howard, that's right. That's just right. east, yeah. right there. So you can find him there most mornings. Is he down there? He's there mm -hmm. most mornings. I don't know where he was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there. either you need to go see him or he needs or to come versa. see you, but we got to get you guys together. Thank and you, And if Casey. I'm not mistaken, for those of you watching tonight, and we know that a lot of you are because Harry is such a beloved uh, figure uh, to those of us that have grown up here in Tampa, and we're so thrilled to have you on mm -hmm. the show tonight, Harry. Thanks for spending time with us tonight. There's going to be an event. Um, rumor has it there's going to be an event in the offing. We were talking with Joe right. Papello here recently. Uh, to honor Harry. So for those of you that would like to know about that, you can reach out to us here at the Tampa Native Show. We'll certainly let you know. Um, and we can also put it up on our Facebook page and on our website. Mm -hmm. So as it draws nearer, and it may be sooner than later, so it could be at the end of this month, the very beginning of next month, uh, we're going to have a little get-together. I think it might be maybe even at Joe's Tahitian Inn, Joe oh, Bobello's Tahitian Inn. So it'll be centrally located, Harry, convenient and close to your house. Count me in. So, um, for sure, stand by for that. We want everybody who knows Harry, knew Harry, worked out, worked out at Harry's. Yeah. Um, and you know, for the most part, it was Smith's Health Studio. Yeah, right. Health Club. Health Club. But most of us just called it Harry Smith's. Yeah. yeah. Harry uh, Smith's. Harry's. Or Harry's. Or Harry's. Right. Yeah. Or just Harry's. We're going to yeah. go work out of Harry's. We're going to work out of Harry's. That's right. <laughs> and and most of, for, for most of us, it was an obligatory stop before we made the disco circuit in the 70s, you know. If you went out that night, you had to get a little pump. You, know, you had to look good in your, in your clothes. 
before you went out. And the location of the building was kind of like tucked away a little bit. You it know? was. It yeah. still is. Mm -hmm. It's in. It's right there. It's on Horatio. But you know, you had to kind of know where it was. Exactly. Which made it special. Off of Henderson it, between it Henderson and Dale, I think. Right across from the Outback Steakhouse. Right. Mm -hmm. okay, exactly mm -hmm. right. Which is not a bad place to be. <laughs> not a bad place to be. Do we have any more pictures? We do, back? actually. Thank you. Let's continue with photo number uh, 17. There we go. There we go. John Slyker. John Slyker. John Slyker. John used to train with me a year before we opened up his gym. Up on 30th Street. 30th Street. Or 30th, yep. Nice little and, dedication there on that mm -hmm. picture as well. Very so that's nice. another thing that, you know, the fellows, they really appreciated what you did for them, Harry. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you gave them their start. You, ta you taught yeah. them right. You, you taught them how to, you know. In fact, he's got a contest on tonight or Saturday night t tonight. Really? You know what? I saw that. I think I saw that on Facebook. Oh, really? And he's got his own, he's got his own. Poster. Yeah, it's a poster, mm -hmm. and you know what? He's got like about twenty different categories. It's right. like you know, over forty, over bunch, fifty, over sixty. He does a good job. And there's two categories in each one, so it's very inclusive. He does a good job. Yep. Yep. So he's still in the business, still nice for guy. money. That's nice wonderful. Guy. Harry, look here. That's we're, we're kind of a little bit out of sequence. That's at LSU. Junior, junior, well, I won the junior nationals. And that's you on the tallest podium there, right? On the left. On yeah. the left, and then on the right, standing on the on the tall in, podium in the, middle, in the middle. Right. In the middle. And how old would you have been here? That was 1948. So you're about 23. Yeah. 23. I'm out of college. I'm going to college at that time. Okay. You're at LSU? Huh? You're at LSU? Is that where you went to school there? No, I went to Georgia. Oh, Georgia. You're a bulldog. Yeah. University of Georgia. Of course. Mm -hmm. I knew that. But the competition was at LSU. Yeah. And that's where you were. That's what that was. That's in the field house. And there's that iconic building that we all know and love. You can't drive by it without getting nostalgic, man. No, I know. I know. Really. Is the signage still up, Harry? Is oh, the yeah. sign up still? Still there. Still there? So what's going to happen with the building now, Harry? I what's don't going have to... any idea. Harry? The least. What's going to happen with the equipment in the building? Is it still the there? The equipment's gone. Oh, you did? You I sold, sold it. it. I, I liquidated mm -hmm. it. Okay, okay. So, you know, so hopefully uh, those that came in to get it, that wanted to get a piece of their history. That's right. You know, they're, they're working out with your dumbbells now, that's you know, right. at home. That's right. That's pretty nice. Harry, has, has um, the rules changed or the procedures changed as far as working out goes? Because I remember when I was working out back in the 70s at your gym, uh, the thing back then was uh, chest, shoulders, tries, legs, lats, and buys. That's right. how I remembered it. You, yeah. do, you would do chest, shoulders, tries on one day, legs, lats, and buys on the next day. That's right. Take a, take a break maybe on Wednesday and do the same thing two more days. Um, does that still apply? That's true. Right. It does? That's my system still. Really? Mm -hmm. If it ain't broke, don't yeah. fix it. Wow. <laughs> Seriously. And it sounds to me like it wasn't broke. I thought, maybe, I thought maybe it changed like a, several shoulders, times. Shoulders, chest, then. and tries all in one day. There wow. you go. I need to get, get to it. Yeah, well, and, that's, and the good part about it, the good part about it, Harry, is that um, if you get a good sense of training early on, you know, somebody takes you under their wing and mm -hmm. teaches you the proper technique and how to do it, you can stay with that your entire life. Mm -hmm. Sure. You know, I mean, yeah, you could concrete. be... Concrete. Yeah, Harry, at, even at 90, you know, obviously you're not going to push as much around, but you can still do form. Oh, yeah. And you can still lift your mm -hmm. dumbbells and you can still... I and you that. probably should... Because what we're finding out now is that, you know, you'll lose that mass. If you don't, keep it up. And the connective tissue is what keeps your mm -hmm. posture straight. And, You're you know, right. I mean, you, you got to have good form all the way through life. That's right. So. Well, I'll tell you what. When I went to Harry's house to, to, to meet him and get the pictures, I shook, we shook his, you know, his hand. And I was, I was going like this, like, wow. That's that old wrestling I, grip, I know, man. That's that old wrestling yeah. grip. It was strong. All right, Harry, so what else did you do for kicks when you were a kid now? I mean, you, you had to, come on, you're growing up in the 40s in Georgia, 30s and 40s in Georgia. What'd you do? Swing from the tire swing? Come on, Harry. Ride your bike, <laughs> go down there. Did you, did you wrestle the kids in the neighborhood? <laughs> Shoot no. the BB gun? I, I used to play a lot of golf. Even as a kid back then, huh? Oh, no, I, I, up, up here in Tampa. Oh, in Tampa, okay, yeah. okay. I, really, I played golf in high school. Okay. Mm -hmm. I was, I, uh, were you swinging back then, the hickory sticks? Huh? Hickory clubs, hickory no, sticks? No, no, no. <laughs> were they, they weren't aluminum shafts back then, they were just, they were wood. Just wood not yeah. wood, but uh, metal. Mm -hmm. Oh, they were metal back then? Oh, yes, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, sure. I would have thought back then they might have been wood. You I was number two men on the golf team Wow. in high school. Wow. I played seven, seven sports in my senior year. Oh, you, you lettered in seven sports in your senior year? Can yeah. you name them, Harry? Let's go. Name mm -hmm. them, Harry. Golf, tennis, and wrestling, football, and base, baseball, and golf. Okay, that's six. I got to have one more. Swimming. Just throw swimming in there. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> golf, tennis, and wrestling. Baseball. Baseball, softball, and basketball. All right, basketball, that's okay. it. That's it. That's a seven-sport letterman, ladies and gentlemen. That's amazing. Huh? Top that. That was in high school. 
in high school in Atlanta, Georgia. Was mm -hmm. it Atlanta? Yeah. In Atlanta, Georgia in the 19, probably the late 30s? 44. 44. Wow. There we go. So when you were a kid, you were always outside doing something very active. Oh, well, well, constantly. year round. Mm -hmm. Not like, unlike today where we have uh, you know, video games and television and, but yeah, it's critical. Critical. Harry, you wouldn't have been, you wouldn't have been satisfied if you'd have been a kid today. No. You'd have been no, outside. Not, not unless they let me play all the sports. <laughs> right, right. And you know, so, and the way they do it now, it's kind of bad, Harry, because sometimes parents have to make decisions for their kids mm -hmm. right. because, you know, they, they specialize so much that they don't let their kids play different sports. And it's mm -hmm. kind of a sad thing right, because, right. you know, you, you want to have your kid to experience different things. Mm -hmm. Let's say he's in the band, for instance, and he's a pretty good band. He's a pretty good drummer, but he's also a pretty good baseball player. Well, you know, sometimes they mm -hmm. got to make a decision. That's right. Mm -hmm. But back then, Harry, you did it all. That's right. And at the same time, you had a slingshot in your back pocket just in case you needed to bag one on the way home. Huh? That's Come right. on, Harry. That's right. I know. I know. That's Riding right. bikes. Ride bikes. Riding bikes I everywhere. Had a, I had delivered papers for the Did you? I just oh. delivered morning and night. All right, wow. let's, let's come back to Tampa real quick because I want to find out of the guys you met in Tampa and that you knew in Tampa, guys like Tom McEwen, and I know you oh, yeah, knew Tom. Oh, yeah, I know Tom. I know you knew mm -hmm. Tom. You probably knew the Culver Houses, maybe. I'm oh, yeah. guessing you knew. I worked for them, you know. I, work, I, run the, I, I did the Bucks for four years. You trained the Bucks? Mm hmm. Well, of course he trained the Bucks. The I Bucks heard, came in in 1974, 75. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Who are you going to get in Tampa in 1974, 75 right. to be your strength conditioning coach? Harry Smith. Yeah. Makes perfect sense. Mm hmm. I was there the first four, four years. How wow. was that four years? Pretty mm -hmm. good? Mm -hmm. Did you have fun? I enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it because I enjoyed what I was doing. Right, right, right. And you got to go to the games, and you got mm -hmm. to be behind the scenes with the <laughs> fellas. And it was our first NFL franchise. I mean, mm -hmm. this it was exciting. pretty exciting stuff. Yeah. That's right. For me, it was. Yeah, and the team's coming in. and Well, even for us on mm -hmm. the outside. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, with those awful uniforms as bad as they were, we loved them. <laughs> we didn't know any different. We packed Tampa Stadium on Sundays. That's right. Pretty good stuff. All right, Stevie, anything else coming well, in there? Not, not yet, but uh, quick question on, the, on your gym. Uh, you also had a racquetball court, right? I and have two racquetball, I have two of them. Two, two racquetball courts, and, and did it have a uh, basketball hoop also? No. No, okay. Did you play racquetball, Harry? Uh -huh. Did you play racquetball, or did you just have that there for I, the guys? I, no, I, I, I had it for, you the, had it for, for the, the customers. Sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure, for your clients. For yeah. Your, yeah. Yeah, because that was a big thing too. That was one well, of my first things, right? Back I in love the, back in the seventies, mm -hmm. late seventies, racquetball kind of came early in. Early forties, right, right? You know what I can remember too, Harry? Um, when we weren't going to work out at your gym, sometimes we'd go to the YMCA downtown. Did you ever go to the YMCA downtown? No, I Why never, would you down, need to never went down gym? there. I never went downtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it, it reminded mm -hmm. me of it, it was more it was it was gym, it was half gymnasium. Uh, half chamber of horrors. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it was like a, it was like a uh, one of them, you know, t torture mm -hmm. chambers. Because it was at the time. This was in the seventies now, or middle seventies, late seventies. Mm -hmm. The building was older. Remember, right. this was this was the. There wasn't much down there. And there wasn't mm -hmm. much there. It was, uh, it was it was sad. It was quiet. It wasn't like it is now. That's right. And air conditioning only in certain parts of the building, Harry. So when you worked out, you had to open them windows, and man, there had already been several fires, mm -hmm. several oh, wow. fires, right? So. I'm just saying, it was, it was a, a magical, magical time. But we loved it. We loved it. And we wanted to work out. Mm -hmm. Because why? Well, you wanted to get bigger. Yeah, and you want to look good. You want to look good. And, and you did curls why? Yeah. Curls for the? Biceps. Curls for the? The women. Curls for the girls. <laughs> curls for the girls. <laughs> exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Harry, we got a beach just about everywhere here. You're going to go to the beach That's right. and take off your shirt? Yeah. And what? You're going to have like, little skinny arms? I don't think so. All right, Harry. Tell us, you got a chance here with about five minutes left in the show, look into that camera and tell your people, tell your fans, tell your friends, anything you want to tell them. Whatever you'd like to say, thanks for all those wonderful years, come and see me at my place. I, I, I enjoyed my years of business, of teaching people how to train correctly. Sure. And supervising, of course. And, and I enjoyed what I was doing. Besides just helping you and helping him, it was just that I enjoyed doing it. Mm -hmm. It was just my, it was my life. And yeah. tell everybody, Harry, secret to longevity, man, because, you know, it, it's, there's got to be a, you got to give us a pearl mm -hmm. before you leave. Drop one on oh, us. Oh, hey, it keeps you going. I mean, if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't be here today. There you go. Mm -hmm. So stay fit. That's right. I'm, I'm hoping moving. to do the same. Keep moving mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. 
That's right. Don't be afraid to lift those weights. No, I'm not a nut. I'm not. Pro probably, never, probably I'm, don't overeat too. That's another one. Of I've them. never been afraid. I've never been a big eater. Right. Well, mm -hmm. that you know. Eat, pro just eat properly. Do you mm -hmm. eat properly? Eat yeah. enough. That's right. You know, I think I think a lot of times people get confused, and, and instead of, you know, eating to live, they live to eat. That's right. And and if you if you don't slow that trend down, then by the time you get to be an older person, our age, you know, you you just realize, you know. If you gain in five pounds a year, after about ten years, think about that. That's right. Simple math. That that's where you get you know the weight comes on. But you look pretty good, Harry. You I, look... I was always uh, conscious of what I ate. Sure. Mm -hmm. I wanted to eat good and eat right mm -hmm. and eat enough. And eat enough. What a simple sure. formula. Yeah. And, but and and when you're training like that, you got to eat discipline too. Sure. Mm -hmm. You got to eat at a certain All time. Meant. You got to eat right. your proteins. You got to make sure. I used to live on protein. I bet mm -hmm. you did. I bet you did. Well, Harry, it's been a special treat sure has. having you with us tonight. Mm -hmm. You know Let's what? See. Skipper, was our email only email yeah, tonight? sure was. With a believer yeah. number? We'll just give him a shirt. Yeah, there you go. Skipper, we got your shirt for you, buddy. We'll come see you at the Tiny Tap, and who knows? When you least expect it, we'll show up, and maybe we'll have Harry Smith with us in the car. Wouldn't that be a special <laughs> treat? So reach out to us, Skipper, and let us know uh, what day, what morning you might be there, and then we'll call Harry and come get him. Harry, it's been great having you on the show. Sure. My pleasure sure being has. here. And you really. know, we're gonna. I, I'd like to go back to Cuba with you. I'd like to see if we can't arrange a flight. And that, just, would be, that would be something. A bunch of us go back there. I would love to see that look on your face, man. Mm -hmm. I know it's been a while since you've been there. Since oh, the forties. Been a long while, right? Yeah. But that's the. I would, I would be glad to go. There you go. You take another picture on the beach. How right. about that, Harry? Yeah. That'd be great. And, and, and kind of remake yeah. that picture of you mm -hmm. standing there like oh, that yeah. on exactly. the beach. Exactly. Yeah, that's right. I don't know if we can get the Queen Mary to park behind him, bro. That <laughs> might be tough. <laughs> that might be tough. <laughs> wow. Well, let me just say that uh, before that's we great. get out of here, and we're getting real close to the end of our show, what a wonderful evening tonight talking with Harry Smith and reliving some of the uh, amazing memories of an amazing life. Um, we'll be here again next week with Charlie Sousa, and the week after that will be our last show. Uh, before we take our summer off and we're going to do something we've not done before mm -hmm. harry we're going to take a summer vacation mm -hmm. you know we've been broadcasting now for almost five years each and every week uh, that yeah. Long? Yep. Yeah. each and every week without missing too many weeks but we've decided we're going to take uh take the summer off so like school yeah just like school yeah. exactly uh july august and september we're going to mm -hmm. be on break but uh, we'll be back uh, stronger and bigger and better uh in the fall and ready to usher in a new season of the tampa native show mm -hmm. harry grab that cup Grab okay. that cup right there. We're going to do a little toast. Let me just say that it's been an absolute privilege and a pleasure mm -hmm. to have Harry Smith in studio with us tonight. What a joy so sharing some of the stories of his wonderful life. Uh, let me say on behalf of everybody that puts this show together, especially Becky Yatas sitting behind the TriCaster, uh, thank you guys. Steve Canella. Thank you. Good to be with you, my man. Same here. So, Harry, ready for this? Yes, yeah, right. Salud, Salud and, and happy, happy days. days. Happy day. We love you, Tampa. We'll see you next week. And switch over now to channel 638, Bright House, and 36, Verizon, to watch last week's show. Right. We sure hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. See you. Bye Harry. now. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks, Harry. What a great show. Mm -hmm. Back when we were younger And everything seemed new We used to have a lot of fun Yes we did No matter what we do Sleepy days, long summer nights Going anywhere we please With love that I could call my own Love that I've always known The city that I call my home Home from which I never roam This love affair was meant to be I love her and she loves me I remember Tampa Oh, she remembers me She remembers me
Thursdays, 7 p.m. on TBCN, home of the Tampa Native Show.